Hello and welcome to The Shows We Watched with me, James King. And me, Emily Johnston. And today we're talking classic TV for the next half hour. Yes, and it's not just a show we watched, but a specific character in a show we watched. Mm. Uh, that doesn't roll off the tongue quite so easily, <laughs> does it? Uh, Snazzy. <laughs> but why not? Because it's his birthday after all. Emily, tell us more. That's right. This week it's Friends and we're talking about Ross Geller. It's a Ross Geller special. <laughs> I, You know what? I can foresee at least another five episodes where we focus on one Friends character. Oh, well, I mean... Maybe even six if we do Gunter. Oh, oh. Do you think there's enough to do Gunter? I, I think he's a legend. He uh, we'll, anyway, that's, we'll get there. that's we'll get several there. seasons down ahead. the line. <laughs> um, but of course, Friends is such a huge topic, a, a, a bona fide phenomenon, 10 seasons, countless awards. The main cast, of course, still making an absolute fortune from syndication. So uh, there's a lot to unpick with Friends. Emily, let's start with just how important Ross is in the group, because sometimes I think he's perhaps a, a little overlooked because... He doesn't have the glamour or, or the humour of the others. But mm. of course, he has his own distinct thing, doesn't he? He he's, he's, he The humour is more goofiness, isn't it? Yeah. And he, to me, I feel like Ross has always been the big brother. He, literally the big yeah. brother. But to the whole group, he's always been seen as the smart one. He's a yeah. paleontologist. Yeah. And or, or as uh, Joey says, dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, really? That's a thing? Yeah. Um, and he obviously is well-educated, uh, has a PhD from Columbia. He works in a museum. Or, well, I mean, obviously, he takes on very various yeah. roles. But when we first meet him, I believe he's working in a museum. And he is the smart guy. He's the guy who is... he He's intelligent, he's educated, and he seemingly has all the answers except he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> very much doesn't and i think that's why ross might be so lovable and fit in so perfectly into this group of people because he might have all the answers as they pertain to books yeah but when it comes to loving a woman or telling someone how he feels he's a bit larry david in a way actually yeah, yeah. he just trips over himself all the time and i think that that's quite endearing but that's the humor that he adds to the group so it, it, it and we'll get to that some of his ba funniest and best moments yeah. but they're very uh, Cluts led, you know, and they're not there. There's not a punchline. It's not he's not a Chandler and he's not a kind of thicker Joey. <laughs> and he's just this sort of innocent humor. That means that he's not as familiar with the world as he should be. And yet he's seen as the leader of this group in a way. Yeah. And he really is the glue as well. And he's so encouraging to the other characters when they're going through life and he's talking to them and offering them advice. And I feel like people really look at Ross like they can depend on him for good advice, where I don't think necessarily you would go to to Rachel to ask for career no, advice. Never, no. Joey, never. No. So Ross would definitely, he's the he's like the dad of the group if we were trying to give family labels. Yeah. And um, where does he sit for you in terms of your favourite characters? I mean, I, you know, I, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, and obviously <laughs> we are dealing with Ross this episode, so yeah. it'd be nice if he was quite high up, but... Um, is he one of your favourites? I think Ross is my favourite. Okay, you're going to say this for every di no, every single character we no, do. I know. I mean, I'm, I mean, you know me well enough. I probably would. Uh, no, I really do think Ross is my favourite. I have had the biggest laughs from Ross. Right. And and I mean, belly hurting, <laughs> bent over, thinking I might be sick, laughing so hard. And I can't say the same about any of the other characters. Yeah. And I feel like everybody has a different reason for why they're favorite is oh, a sure. favorite yeah, but that yeah. is why ross is mine because it's one of the great um kind of debates in a bar isn't it you know mm. which friend's character are you which yeah. friend's character do you most like which I friend's character are you by the, the city way for oh, okay well we can do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we must roll in different circles. yeah so you've never thought about which friend's character you are because with guys i think they always say chandler because they want to be seen as the funny one but actually really? most of us are ross that is very interesting. But we could unpack that for the so next 20 minutes. So many guys I know would go, well, clearly I'm Chandler because we like to think that we're hilarious with the one-liners. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, a wife or a girlfriend might say, oh, give it a break. You're clearly Ross. You're the geek. But you know what's really interesting that you've just said that? It's the first time I thought that there's not one character that's traditionally handsome. I mean, I guess Joey would be considered the uh, hunky uh, one. Yeah, I mean, that's that's played up to in the show, isn't it? 
Yeah, but I don't. I th- How are you doing? Yeah, well, yeah. It's I not mean, his episode. <laughs> I'm not going to do that yet. No, but I mean, I get. But just when we're talking about the characters, and yeah. you, you know, like for example, when you talk about the Sex and the City characters, you have like the kind of quirky, the, you know, the quirky one, the pretty one, the yeah. kind of slutty one, and things like. We'll get into those later, but yeah, um, I feel like for this specific thing, like I would say, for example, that Rachel was the pretty one. Yes. Out of the girls, and when I look at the guys, I wouldn't. I, I, maybe that's just my personal <laughs> <laughs> preference. It's Gunter. Gunter is the answer. It is the secret. Really, I mean, we all know it's Brad Pitt, but like, um, I just I find that really interesting. I've never even thought that guys might discuss who their friend's character would be. We definitely did at the time. Um, That's awesome. You know, when, I love but, that. Yeah, the first time round it was on. I definitely did that. So you never thought, oh, I'm so Monica or I'm so Phoebe or anything? No, because I don't think I'm any of the three. I don't even think I even remotely identify with any of those three women. <laughs> not even in the slightest. Maybe. No, not. I can't even say maybe. There's none. Talking of the women, we should mention, of course, Ross's true love, uh, Rachel. I mean, the main storyline of the Ross whole and series. Rachel, it, arguably the thing that 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 it was a big hit, but that propelled it into another dimension, isn't it? The 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 on and off relationship of Ross and Rachel. Are you listening to With or Without You right now on your head? Oh, um, that's <laughs> you know that's. I mean, I, I, as you'll hear, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Ross and Rachel, but that is a really powerful moment. Yeah, the use of that song. Yeah. Um, and it's in the show from very early on. The first season finale, if you remember, is is Rachel finding out that that Ross is in love with her. I think it's Joey's big mouth, isn't it, that yep. gives it away? Yeah. And, and he flies off to China, and and he's been in love with her since childhood. This is this is. There's a lot of backstory to. We this. have video evidence of this. Exactly. As well. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Um, there's a lot of history there, and of course, there are many important episodes in that relationship between Ross and Rachel. Um, there's the one when they go on a break. That phrase kind of became a whole thing, didn't it? We're on a break. We're on a break. We were yeah. on a break. Um, because they've been dating for a while, but then they go on a break, it all goes wrong. There's the one where Ross gets married. Um, the double episode in London, baby. It's London, baby. Such a good episode. Uh, or such so, a good pairing of episodes, sorry. Exactly, yeah. Two episodes. Ross is about to marry Emily, calls her Rachel. End of season four. Wow, that's the way to end the season. Um, and along the way, there's there's Carol, his ex-wife. Um, with whom he has a son, Ben. She leaves him after realising she's a lesbian, falls in love with Susan. Ross, of course, dates Elizabeth as well. Do you remember when he dates his student in season six? Yeah. Uh, And Rachel dates Elizabeth's dad, played by... Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Oh my God, I totally forgot about yeah, that. That's great. That's so brilliant. I totally forgot. So there's a lot of relationship stuff going on with Ross, but Ross and Rachel is really the heart of it, even when he's seeing other people. Yeah. Essentially, we're just waiting for him to get together with Rachel. I mean, we all kind of knew, like, it was yeah. just that it was, I think that's the one thread that was the strongest that ran through the entire series. Yeah, the mainstay. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I'm just going to rain on your parade now. Oh, God. Here's my thing. <laughs> Don't do it, James. Don't I get him, I, I get him loving her for years from afar. That's a lovely setup. Okay. okay. I, I'm not sure I get her reciprocating. To oh me, that God. feels like, <laughs> to me, that feels like kind of male wish fulfillment that I can be the... The, you know, the slightly nerdy paleontologist yeah. and and lust from afar after this beautiful princess. But probably in real life, she wouldn't reciprocate. But in the show, mm. of course, I'm she... I'm going to have an answer And for this. sometimes I wonder if she's, knowing Rachel, because she is a bit princessy, as we know. She is, yeah. That actually it's just the fact that he's in love with her and worships her is more of an attraction to her than wow. actually Ross the guy. Interesting that you would say that, James, because that was going to be my yeah. response to that, was yeah. the fact that one of the most memorable moments for me is when she sees the video of prom, Yeah. when Ross goes up and puts on his dad's tuxedo and he's sitting uh, on the stairs waiting to take... Ra- he comes down the stairs, he's going to take Rachel to prom because her date has stood her up. And then uh, the video shows him coming down the stairs and, and the girls leaving with their dates. So Monica and Rachel leave with their dates and, and Ross just looks crestfallen sitting on the stairs. And I correct me if I'm wrong because it's been a while since I've seen this episode, but in my head it plays out that she they're watching this in the future and she, from that moment. They're watching it in the present from yeah. that past moment. And she gets up and immediately kisses Ross. And I think, and what I, I've always thought about Rachel as a character with Ross and why that works is because I think Rachel has always been loved as a superficial thing. And I think Ross has always, she's always felt that 
Ro- from that moment specifically that Ross has really truly loved her and it was before she, I think it was before she had her nose job and things like that so <laughs> I'm on the show yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, of course so- Jennifer Aniston in real life has never had any work done no just she's, just, she's just gorgeous as she yeah. is um, but I really think that there is something much more sinister in that storyline and the idea that Rachel has never really felt love the way that Ross could deliver that for her. And I think that's why that works because she feels this depth to their to their attraction and their history that she didn't have with, was it Barry she was getting married? It, it still feels like it's her responding positively to him being in love with her well and that's why i was agreeing a, yeah with you. as opposed to her genuinely loving him i think you, well i mean you i think that, I mean, again I, we could go a, way it's into a this fine one. line i guess isn't it you know where one stops and the other starts but but look look, look at um chandler and monica for example yeah. which begins actually in that episode in london baby yeah. that's that's where it and it just happens so naturally and Uh, I know, obviously, Ross and Rachel is over many seasons, whereas Chandler and and Monica is more of a quick thing. It begins quickly, at least. Um, But you just look at those two and you go, of course. Yeah. Makes total sense. Both neurotic, you know, absolutely. I completely buy it. Yeah, but you Um, don't buy the Ross and Rachel. It's not that I don't... I mean, listen, it's it's a a cultural phenomenon, their relationship. You know, I buy it. Yeah. But never as much as I bought... Um, Chandler and Monica. That's so interesting because I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I see them uh, absolutely. I could see them hanging out in the group of friends, which of course they do. Yeah. I could see them even being individual friends. Yeah. But crossing that line and being lovers. Yeah. That that's where you know as brilliantly as it's played out, and of yeah. course it's played out brilliantly. It's it is, you know yeah. it's it's classily done. But I just never. Never quite bought it as much as some of the other relationships. So is it not well written enough to be believable for you? No, I think it's it's just I don't see what they have in common. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. James, some of the greatest love stories are not of our time. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, every time I talk about this and I go, look, he's just some kind of, you know, geeky intellectual guy and she's like a babe princess, I think. Well, that's pretty much my own marriage. <laughs> So I can't, I, I, I can't criticize it when I that's happened to me. So that does that does change my arguments. Slightly. No, now James, <laughs> that is a ridiculous over. No, 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 no. But and he's but he's not like this is the other thing about Ross though, the evolution of Ross yeah. as well. Even if I and I can't help but mention the style evolution of Ross because he does he's he's a dapper looking guy. He dresses nicely and he manages to to date some hot ladies. And you yeah. know, you know, are sophisticated uh, uh, women, and uh, there must be some attraction there yeah. to well, the it, general population. Not of New just York sophisticated the women. He dates a, a, a girl, virtually a, one of his students. How old was she? Well, she's a college student, so yeah. she's legal. Oh no, absolutely. I will not suggest the otherwise. But she's certainly a lot younger than he is, so there's certainly an attraction there. Um, do you want to know something really interesting? That's a bit of a side, but since this is the first time we're talking okay, about friends. Okay, you were a college student and you dated <laughs> Ross, someone 20 no. years older than me. <laughs> no, no, God, no, yeah, oh. my art history professor I was talking about, no. Um, so we've talked about Beavis and Butthead and how my parents wouldn't let me watch Beavis and Butthead. Yes, that was in a previous episode. But yeah. You can't possibly tell me that your parents didn't let you watch Friends. Well, no, my fa- my family watched Friends as a family. Oh, okay. But here's where I f- say only for a couple of years, because obviously then I was off, you know, we left for university yeah. and things like that. But that's where I find it very interesting that I wasn't allowed to watch Beavis and Butthead. And pretty much like the only time they talked about sex is when they were talking about some lady's, you know, nice figure or something. And well, on, on Beavis and Butthead. And Beavis yeah, and it was Butthead. pretty blunt when it came to sex. Yeah, but it was like blunt and then done. Whereas yeah. Friends is very nuanced and there's a lot of references to a lot of things, which I think at the time I was too young to get, which is maybe why my parents thought it was okay for us all to watch that. But yeah. this happened in America. People watched the show as, as as a family show. And I go and I watch, you know, like everyone else in the world, you turn on one of the channels on TV and Friends is playing. And you're like, yeah. okay, I'll have a Friends moment. Whatever episode it is, I know I'll enjoy it. And some of those episodes, I sit there and I go... Uh, wait. I wasn't allowed to watch Beavis and Butthead, but we were watching this as a family. What the heck? Anyway, totally aside, but I just thought you might be interested. Well, in we'll be talking about some of those episodes coming up because yes, we're going to look yeah. at some of uh, Ross's funniest moments. You are listening to the shows we watched. As I said, more Ross Geller on the way. And we find out whatever happened to perhaps Ross's second love, <laughs> second greatest love in his life, Marcel the monkey. Oh, God. The answer's coming up. Hello. 
Hello, it's James here. Now it's time for a word from our sponsor, Better Help. How are you with problem solving, with finding the right mindset to achieve your goals? It can be difficult, right? It can be really tough to train our brains to focus on solutions, to not get bogged down with all the challenges we face in our daily lives. And I've certainly found that talking to a therapist can help with that. There have been times when I've just felt overwhelmed, overwhelmed with career issues or relationship issues or family problems, the things we all feel. And just by talking to a therapist, I was able to unload a lot of that stress I was carrying and and I was able to see things from a different angle, see things more clearly, make my worries much less intimidating and less overwhelming. So it's an experience I would recommend absolutely to anyone. Talking, sharing is such a powerful tool. And if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's affordable, it's entirely online, making it convenient and accessible. You don't have to worry if you live somewhere that's not near any therapists, because it's all done remotely. That probably actually makes it less intimidating as well. You don't have to go to a a strange building or or sit in a waiting room. Those places always freak me out. So you simply get paired with a therapist after filling out a brief survey. And of course, you're free to switch therapists at any time if you don't think it's the right match. So when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash TSWW today to get your 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash T-S-W-W. This is the shows we watch with me, Emily Johnston. And me, James King, talking all things Ross from Friends. (laughs) It's so much Friends and the characters are so rich that we're just going to deal with them individually. We have to, otherwise we'd be sitting here for 10 hours straight. Exactly, and no one would want that. So uh, the first time we're doing this, we're looking at Ross. Remember his pet monkey in in season one? Marcel. Yes, a white-headed capuchin monkey. Uh, Did eight episodes. (laughs) Um, Twist is... Did you find that on IMBD? His IMBD. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He's got his own page. Well, actually, I say that. The twist is there were two monkeys, actually. What? There was a he and a she. Um, so a, a male and a female. The male, alas, is no more. But oh, the funny. female, certainly as of last year, Katie the monkey, uh, is still very much alive because they can live to be around forty years old. Wow! When they're domesticated, anyway. And has so, she done any other feature films? We well, that's the thing shows? because um, there's a bit of confusion about this about which monkey did what. <laughs> um, but certainly, and this this feeds into actually a friend's storyline. Because I think it was the male Marcel who featured in the Dustin Hoffman thriller Outbreak as the monkey who passed on the virus. Big movie. Um, Well, very relevant these days to watch. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, And for a while, there was this gag that the the Friends cast member who had the biggest hit movie was actually Marcel the monkey. (laughs) Oh my God, what a good guy. Um, But then as Friends went on, we then went into season two and and Marcel returns briefly because Marcel has become himself a movie star in the show and is making Outbreak 2. So it's kind of an in-joke because actually Marcel, or the the monkey that played Marcel, was in the real outbreak. So in the show, he's making Outbreak 2, The Virus Takes Manhattan, (laughs) co-starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. And there's a lot, there's, I don't know if you remember the scene, but, you know, they go to to the set and and, and visit him. Um, uh, But there's controversy. There's controversy with Marcel. Schwimmer has slated working with the monkey. No, come on. I don't know if he was specific about the ma- male monkey or the female monkey or just both <laughs> in general, but Schwimmer has said he didn't like working with Marcel. Oh my God, maybe Schwimmer didn't even know there were two monkeys. Maybe that's what's through him. But He's like, one day he likes me, one day he hates I me. Know, He's exactly. so fickle. <laughs> but, but the trainers, they've gone, this is outrageous. You know, he was just jealous because Marcel was getting the laughs. And there's been a bit of, you know, he said, I hated working with that monkey. 
And so there's been a bit of controversy <laughs> about it. Um, Who is his PR? I would never let my clients say, I, I hate working with a monkey. That's just I, death. But these were, <laughs> this was in, you see, this was in the 90s. This was when it wasn't all media controlled and you could just say what you wanted. And now <laughs> it's come back to haunt him. So yes, Katie, the monkey is still alive. I very much doubt though, David is making regular visits to, to, to see her. I mean, it looked like love. I'm, I'm going to say he's, he, that just proves what a great actor he is. If he didn't like that monkey, I would not have known that on camera. Um, some of Ross's funniest moments. We're talking about him being a great actor. What are the moments where, well, you said earlier that he's made you belly laugh. Oh, my God. Like on the floor with hilarity. I can guarantee you I'm going to give you four, maybe five moments. Yeah. And, and sure, I'm about to drink a slurp yeah, of take water. A, take a sip first. Go because on. I don't want to spit it out no, you, with, well, with the hilarity. You will. You will. So take a sip now while I'm, while I'm having this moment. And I will Go tell you, I'd like to take you to a tanning booth. <laughs> <laughs> a spray tan oh, booth. Oh, amazing. Every time I put, I mean, I don't do tanning booths, but occasionally I'll put on a, <laughs> a like a cream that's yep. a tanning cream every time. You think uh, of Ross. If I whiten my teeth. Or, or put some tanning cream on. Oh my God, the teeth whitener. I, I mean, think of Ross. I did think, do I, do, do I mention the white teeth or the tanning booth? But really in my head, because I actually do do the spray tans. Yeah. And every time I get in, I I, I laugh because I go, I, I'm laughing at myself. Obviously I'm standing naked in a container where they're about to spray me with stuff that's going to turn me a different color. But like it is, you can't not think of Ross. That's one of his most iconic moments. And I actually, if somebody doesn't laugh at that, I'm sorry. You can hate friends, okay? But if you don't laugh at that, I don't know what's wrong with you. That is one of the greatest moments in comedy. It, it just and, he, and again, it's not how he delivers the line. It's all in the action. He's yeah. a he's a klutz, and yeah. he can't figure stuff out. And and it's brilliant, and it's just so well done. I and think I'm, there's great physical comedy in Friends. Actually, of course, yeah. the 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 dialogue and the writing is brilliant. But yeah. but you forget that there's some great just pratfalls and things yes. like that, and they do them really well. Well, and then the, I mean. When the, someone says the word pivot, do you think of any other person <laughs> on this planet? I mean, that is a hundred. We kind of use that now, don't we? That word yes. pivot as a sort of almost like a self-help word. You yeah, know, that you have to like lean in. You have to pivot. All oh, these God. sort of words to to make us deal with life's troubles. I mean, I'll just get personal for a second. I had a shrink once say, "I think it's time for you to pivot in your life," and I literally <laughs> laughed at her couch. And she was like, "I mean, I didn't think it was that much of a departure." And I'm like, "I'm so sorry. I'm just on a couch. And I'm thinking pivot." And she didn't laugh. And I was like, "What pivot?" Pivot! Pivot! Yeah, that was the last time you saw that thing. <laughs> yeah, she was not very good. Anyway, <laughs> telling me to pivot. What does she know? Um, okay, so the next one, leather pants. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the the fact that Ross, and this is why I do, the, the part of me does have a soft spot for him because he played with random fashion yeah. and he wanted to explore new things. <laughs> like leather pants. Dude, what were you thinking? I've been there. <laughs> oh, no, James. Yeah, I've totally been there. You haven't. I absolutely have. Um, when around were you that same era. Pants? It was probably around that same era. And um, I just, you know, maybe guys, you know, guys listening will appreciate this. Sometimes you just feel the need for a leather pant. Where did you find leather pants long enough for you? Well, that that is true, yeah. Um, Were they tailor-made? They weren't tailor-made, no. I think, <laughs> you know, it was just a regular high street shop. But um, they, they, they didn't last long. They maybe had a couple of outings. They're not a practical trouser. They're really not. Did you end up in a bathroom with baby lotion and baby powder? <laughs> it didn't get quite that bad, thankfully. I'm going to ask your wife about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it oh was my... way before her. She would oh never have God. married me if she'd known oh about the leather God. pants. I'm not sure. Like, I just, again, one of those moments where you yeah. just think, I'm not sure if I, well, I wouldn't know because I'm, I'm not a guy, but I'm not sure if a man have experienced this. And now I have firsthand knowledge that this is an actual thing that people can. It's just a sort of, with. it's like a rite of passage, I think. Wow. The man yeah. leather pants bathroom phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. Something for you all to write into us about. Yeah, yeah. Please share your stories. So I have two left. Yeah. Fake British accent. <laughs> And, I, and of course, I have to say that here because mm. I'm not British, you're British. So his, yeah. and I'm horrible. Like it, in this country, people can be from all over and I don't know where the heck you're from. And I've been here 20 years and there's no excuse for it. I'm yeah. so sorry. But his British accent is hilarious. And then of course, the whole like phasing out of the British accent. <laughs> it's just that episode again, belly laughs. Yeah. Absolute belly laughs. Yeah. And it's just- He's and, so well-meaning, isn't he? He so wants to be- seen as cool yeah. and experimental and sophisticated and all those things but of course as soon as you try really hard 
you're not. Well, and every, it has to be effortless. But every single, funny you say that, every single episode I've just mentioned is him trying too hard. Every single pitfall he has, yeah. every single gag moment is because he's trying to be something he's not. Yeah. Um, and in some part, including my last one, which is as we're approaching the f- favorite holiday of the year, Thanksgiving, the uh, Brad Pitt episode. Oh, yes. <laughs> which, yes, of course. It does Brad- have another name, so but I call it the Brad Pitt Brad episode. <laughs> was, uh, Brad was dating Jennifer Aniston at this point. He was, yeah. So he must, it must have been a bit like, yeah. get Brad on the show. Let's see yeah. what we can do. And then, of course, the hilarious moment of that whole thing is the fact that he hates Rachel. Um, and they have the I Hate Rachel Club. And, <laughs> and Ross is, he he's trying to play cool with all this. I feel like I just kind of wanted to mention Brad Pitt and Thanksgiving there. Yeah. Like Ross is, you know. <laughs> you know, the guest stars on Friends is a whole other episode, isn't it? But oh my God, that should brilliant. definitely be an yeah. episode. We've already mentioned Brad and Bruce Willis, but we could go on to countless other ones. It is amazing. But the chemistry between the two of them is, again, a brilliant nod just to Ross because as, a, as an actor... Um, um, David Schwimmer as an actor and as a character because it was well written he plays it the two of them have this hilarious yeah. and actually th- there's so many points that dialogue where you can sort of see them cracking up and they're channeling the crack ups into like anger <laughs> and it's just you just are there it's like you're at the table with them it's just yeah. one of my favourite episodes so that's not that's not really one of the funniest moments for me with Ross but it's definitely one of my favourite ones I really like we'll just finish off with um, the, the I think probably my favorite ross episode which is uh the one where chandler crosses the line so this is season four episode seven um and obviously there is chandler getting it on with joey's girlfriend kathy yeah. that's sort of the, the principal plot of that episode but but the the second plot is is ross just at his absolute geekiest with his wordless sound poems <laughs> on his keyboard encouraged oh to revisit his his teenage years as a keyboard player um the sound <laughs> they go no uh, monica goes no not the sound um and this is essentially ross using a load of sound effects on his synthesizer and then That's just so saying good. things like electrifying <laughs> infinite time on his lip mic, thinking he's sort of like Kraftwerk or some sort of influential electro, um, you know, uh, muso. I didn't even know what he was referencing. I was like, this is just so batshit crazy. Yeah. I've never heard anything like this in my life. Is there actual so, music that sounds like no, that? I don't, well, I think no, but he obviously <laughs> thinks that he's some groundbreaking, um, influential um, uh, electronic musician. Um, he's talking about fashion. He's wearing this awful, like, chunky neck chunky v-neck cream sweater for most of the episode and that's another thing going back to the whole rachel i think which would rachel look at that guy and think i i really like him in fact i think she she mentions the fact that they used to date in that episode and is pleased that they're not dating anymore <laughs> see i know what you're talking about for what he's wearing and that was actually really a big style in america yeah maybe so that was like a moment. I'm not giving it nods as to like that should no, continue, but, but yeah. it was an actual fashion moment. He was just following in the trends. Oh, man, I know what I'm wearing for the next episode. <laughs> um, Emily's little favourite, a nice chunky V-neck sweater. <laughs> Who knew, guys? Um, but actually, more positively, you know, it is just a great example of, of David Schwimmer's comedy acting. And uh, I love that my favourite moment is that when he finishes one of his sound poems he just holds up his hand <laughs> just briefly he doesn't want a response immediately <laughs> he just wants a second silence and then he properly finishes but wait and- hold on i feel like there's another thing here isn't yeah. doesn't phoebe is this this might be the next episode is it phoebe because phoebe like has a quite like impressed reaction like doesn't yeah. she give up so she says she's giving up yeah. music yeah because he's he goes to the coffee shop and plays there yes, and she says okay. i can't follow that yeah and he yeah. basically agrees to retire so yeah. that phoebe may continue and it's just like what is happening <laughs> and that's where i kind of have to take my hat off to the writers and be like, this is brilliant well both phoebe and ross think they're brilliant it, it, and we all know that they're not yeah it's just, it's beautiful. And and I just think it's a lovely little insight into Ross's past, isn't it? But also, of course, who he still is. Mm. That, you know, he was this, and we often see little flashbacks to him as a teenager. Yeah. You know, he was this guy in the 80s with his keyboards Mr. making Synth. these weird sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Um, thinking that he's very alternative, but actually we all know he's... Wait, he had a band with Chandler. Of course. 
I totally forgot. I had yeah. crazy like Duran Duran hair. Yeah, yeah, of course, like a flock of seagulls, all that <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, a flock of seagulls. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And yeah. they have those crazy blazers and yeah. stuff. So, like, he's, Ross has a musical history. He's tried. He's definitely tried, hasn't he? God bless you, Ross. <laughs> we love um, you, Ross. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm sure the other five uh, main stars of Friends will be getting their own dedicated episodes. Oh, my gosh. Very shortly. Emily. Once again, as always, you're my friend. Oh, James, thank <laughs> you. We can have our own season. I'll have in here with that. See you next week. <laughs> See you next week. And if you'd like to send us an email about friends or anything else, or a voicemail, a comment, an idea for a show, or just want to say hi, our email address is theshowswewatched at gmail.com. That's theshowswewatched at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you and may use your message in a future show. And you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Diversion Pods. I'm also James King Movies. We've got Emily Jane Johnston, mm-hmm. that's your social media, right? Uh, and the shows we watched is a production of Diversion Audio. This season was written, researched, and hosted by us, Emily Johnston and James King. Our supervising producer and sound mixer is Mark Francis, based on a concept by John Tuttle. And our head of marketing is Erica Farmer, and the original theme music is by Tyler Cash. The shows we watched, I really want to say, was recorded in front of a live studio audience, but, you know, it wasn't. Uh, It was recorded here at the brilliant Vox Pod Studios in London and executive produced by Jacob Bronstein, Mark Francis and Scott Waxman for Diversion Audio. And we're out, people. Yeah. (laughs)